guys we will be taking all the questions in the end stay tuned yes so today uh, me sakshi and uh, the director of chalo versus jal uh, we are going to discuss about the stages of applying to study abroad so the application process for every university and every country like it differs from country to country however uh, there are some general rules which will be applicable for almost all the countries that we are going to discuss today so the first is research so before applying or even before uh, uh, thinking of applying you need to research a bit i mean research about the program that you will be doing for example there are some students which are pretty clear from right from the beginning what they want to do in the future but some are not so basic for example if uh, somebody uh, somebody is doing bachelor's in electronics and engineering electronics and electrical engineering and now they are saying that yeah data is popular and we need i mean i need to change the um, program but are you able to i mean will you be allowed to do that so you need to uh, research about that you need to research about the popular what programs etc yes okay so once you research you know once you research and shortlist the programs right so the next one uh, you know for the shortlisted programs you know whether you shortlist one program or three programs five programs then uh, next step is obviously to go a little bit as one step deeper and then look at the actual requirements for that program right and every program every school has different requirements uh, it's very important to go through the requirements like very diligently and carefully uh, some of the requirements uh, might be confusing and you can definitely take the help of uh, the agency that you're working with or you can also reach out to the school uh, for clarification if you're directly working with the school uh, to clarify any other requirements for example another thing is you know uh, the requirements are not general for every applicant it could be specific for every um, country for example you know a lot of schools have specific requirements for applicants from india and similarly you know they could have different different requirements for you know uh, applicants from other countries especially for example language requirement is different for you know indian applicants and different for um, you know uh, other uh, countries from you know um, other country like applicants from other countries so it's very important to go through the requirements and also another important thing is deadlines Uh, some schools actually uh, you know they have deadlines as early as 6 months prior to the start of the program especially for canada for example you know program starting in september they close as early as you know uh, the first deadline could be as early as you know jan or march so it's very important to go through the requirements and also the deadlines um, and if you are unsure work with the school or work with the agency but it's very important to go through them so you you are prepared on what to do on the next steps or to you sakshi yes so once you check the requirements of the university for example uh, for percentage scored in bachelor then percentage some of the universities might also ask you to give gmat or gre like competitive tests uh, like that so you need to check the requirements after that you can prepare for the requirement right for example if i right, is whether it is language test yes. or competitive exams yeah yes so uh, generally for ielts uh, uh, students prepare for 1 to 1, 1.5 to 2 months basically for gmat and gre you can prepare for 3 to 4 months then you can book the test and then you can i mean go ahead with all meeting all the requirements yes over to yeah. you yes. thank you sakshi and uh, you know for timeline wise i think you know it really depends on every applicant uh, some applicants take less of time some applicants take uh, more time i think the key is to uh, you know take the mock tests and see you know how you're scoring based on that you know whenever you're ready you can go ahead but again important thing is to uh, you know back you know back track it for example you know you're applying you're targeting for september intake you know you need to put in your application by at least you know march then you need to you know have the results by end of feb so back track it like that right yes. and next step words actually yes i i guess uh, canada is already closed for january 2023 like almost all the co- colleges for almost all the programs are already closed so at least they need to apply at least before 10 to 12 months prior especially for canada at least start planning yeah start planning 10 to 12 months prior 6 months uh, in advance i think you know uh, most of the schools most of the programs are closed but you know um, here and there some schools you know if they have window they will open it again so they have multiple rounds right so definitely round 1 round 2 is kind of done so there could be round 3 but there is no certainty the sooner 
you know you get in the better it is uh, the higher the chances of admission so yes. that's the key right? till it's not late for may intake students so they apply for may january to i don't know like no guarantee uh, yeah chances are less yes right so number f- uh, so next one is you know once you know you are you identify your you shortlist your programs you look at the requirements right you take the competitive exams whatever it is like you you take the required jari gmat or you know ielts toefl depending on the country you're applying for you have everything ready uh, one more important piece of information is you know a lot of schools and programs look for you know why are you interested in uh, they ask it they ask a specific question in different formats like you know why are you interested in this program or why are you interested in this school so they ask it in form of cover letter or sop statement of purpose or career goals and this is very important guys you know more than um, you know it is as important as grades as important as you know language scores or other scores because this is the place where uh, you can showcase the unique uh, you know strengths of your application because other uh, areas of your application is just black and white i mean you cannot change them they're documents right so you know there are grades um, or scores you know you already got them that's it and there could be numerous other applicants that have got a similar score or higher score a lot of times right so if you need to stand out this is your opportunity so this is the document where you need to really showcase like from your own voice um, you know what is your journey so far why are you so interested in this country this program or this you out of it so you know that's the key so this um, sop statement of purpose or career goals um, you know or cover letter whatever it is called this is very important uh, to prepare um, you know reflect through it and start putting down notes and you can definitely take help if needed but it, it, you know the original the more original the more voice uh, you have in this letter the better it is so the yeah, higher the chances of admission right yep or do you say next one yes so as jill mentioned that sop is the very important document uh, uh, which, which which can like change uh, the perspective of the admission committee and yeah apart from sop there is also one thing lor you all must have heard about that lor is letter so lor basically is one document which any person who knows you academically or professionally will be recommending you to that specific university that why they should take right so you can get the lor uh, signed from anybody who knows you professionally or academically. you can visit the college uh, and get the signatures of your professor principal study anybody or maybe if you're working or you have done internship then you can uh, uh, your senior managers anybody who knows you professionally yes yeah, over to that, you ajal uh, that's right that's so letter of recommendation um, you know these days schools are asking one academic and one pro- uh, one professional if you're working right and lot of times um, it's good to identify the uh, professors or you know your colleagues or superiors that are going to recommend you uh some schools are actually asking to receive the recommendation directly from their email uh you know instead of signing it and uploading it so be prepared for any of that requirement right and the next one is you know um document translations or evaluations right uh, some schools you know uh, since we have different grading system in india uh, and you know um, whatever country you're applying to canada us uh some schools prefer them to be evaluated by you know uh, any you know certified evaluation agency for example in canada and the us uh wes is one of the most um, you know widely recognized services so some schools require the documents to be evaluated by wes and in, in rare cases if the certificates are not in english um, they need to be translated by certified translator as well to english um you know into a lot of countries and even wes requires that they need to be translated into the language uh, into english as well so you know translation uh, in some cases but in in many cases uh, you know the evaluation some schools offer the evaluation service themselves like at the school itself they charge a fee for it but overall uh, you know the important thing to note is it adds a little bit of time to your application processing time so you be aware of that uh, when you're up, you know looking through the requirements check you know if there is a evaluation requirement so that you can plan accordingly how do you section yes so uh, for example university of regina is uh, one of the most popular universities in canada 
they require a, a WES evaluation for most of the programs generally. Yes. So the next part is plan for the costs. So you must have uh, um, discussed with your parents about the budget. If you're if you're planning to go to abroad, you must have decided per annum budget. A budget for two years, budget for living expenses, budget for tuition. So you need to decide all of that. You need to research about uh, what is the average tuition fee in which country, uh, whichever country you have, uh, you are planning to go. You can, uh, you can explore some part-time jobs, and uh, yeah, you can decide the cost accordingly. You can, uh, I mean, you can categories first with ambitious, third, third safe, ambitious. Will be, um, I mean, for those universities, will be out of budget. Moderate can be those which can uh, afford, safe under budget. So you can categorize the, uh, uh, then you can maybe you can expect scholarships as well. So I mean, for example, in ambitious college, you have um, one course which cost you twenty lakhs, and you have still applied. If it's uh, ambitious, still you have applied it, and you got the seven lakh. Uh, I mean, seven. Lakh of uh, seven lakh rupees scholarship, then it it will come under the moderate category automatically. So yes, cate categorization will help. Over to you, Jal. Yeah, sure, Sakshi. So uh, you know, once you plan for the cost, right? At least you know approximate cost depending on the programs that you're interested in and all that. Um, you know, you can definitely look at their tuition fees and living expenses. After that, you know, you have pretty much covered most of the basic items, right? So, you know, you looked at what programs and you looked at the, uh, what, which, you know, which country, what, what school, one, what program, and you looked at the broad requirements. Then, you know, you took the, ex um, you know, exams that are required, whether it is GRE, GMAT, TOEFL, IELTS, um, and you took your SOP, you, you prepared your SOP, and you have all the documents um, evaluated if required. And then, so now is the time to make that application, right? So prepare the application package and submit it before the deadline. That's the key, before the deadline. So, you know, that's one step. Uh, that's a closing step to submit the application. Then you need to, you know, monitor the application progress. Um, and, you know, if the school requires additional clarification information, they'll get in touch with you, right? So uh, you need to continuously, you know, be in touch with the school to, you know, until you get the admission. Meanwhile, you can also start thinking about visa application, like what are the requirements for, you know, visa application for this country, whether it is, you know, if it is US, um, you need to think about, okay, DS-160 form, then, you know, how about, how are the slots coming? And, you know, obviously you need I-20 for that, but you can start researching and planning for the visa application part. We'll cover the visa application part, um, you know, for each country because the uh, specific process is different for every country. So we're going to cover that process in detail uh, separately for every country. But, you know, this is a good time. But since you already submitted the application and you're waiting for admission results, you can utilize this time to start planning for the visa process and you can at least start gathering documents uh, that are required. So, yeah, that pretty much sums up the, uh, you know, high level stages of, uh, you know, application for any country. Some countries have a little bit different steps, but at the high level, these are, you know, the high level steps. And if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach us, uh, reach to us, and um, you know we can definitely provide specific inf information for your specific country and uh, your specific situation. Um, but until then, uh, over to Sakshi. Yes. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope that this information was useful for you. Next week, same uh, day, same time, we will be discussing about. Um, we will basically have an interactive session with one of um, uh, uh, one of our successful Canadian visa candidate. Uh, so we will get to know about his journey from India to Canada. So we hope you join that. All right, and that will definitely give a um, bit more perspective from the student himself. You know, who went through this process. Um, you know, right from researching to application to you know visa. Um, the you know program application to visa application and successful visa uh, you know approval so you know you can definitely get the student perspective as well so that will be very helpful uh, we'll definitely you know recommend you to join that session yes thank you